So I've been moving things around in the shop and I just cleared out a large area behind me there for doing some large projects and I'm really excited about that. But today I gotta tackle this desk. You see that desk? Uh-huh. Look at that, 3D printer right there. Ooh, my finger, right? Ooh, back. I can never do this right. You guys who do this on film and like can point right at it, mad respect for you, seriously. So I need to build a cabinet for that thing. This is a Dremel. I decided to go with this printer after watching uh, Joe Telling, the 3D printing nerd. I watched a bunch of his videos and for a starter printer, this thing has been a dream. I've had it for a couple weeks, done some fun stuff. And I, you understand if you're not into 3D printing, but if you are and you'd like to check out more about it, check out Joe Telling, 3D printing nerd. Links in the description box below. We're gonna focus on building a cabinet to do for this today to get it off my desk. So this is a pretty straightforward build. There were a couple of limitations. First of all, I wanted to use only material I had in the shop, just scrap wood. So I'm kind of piecing a bunch of stuff together. Started by taking some measurements from the printer and then kind of giving a draft, like an over, you know, just all the dimensions that I needed. And um, the base I'm gonna make out of some rough two by six. Now this stuff is really out of square. Uh, so I, I used it anyway and it worked. Um, I started by making a frame and then adding some little parts in the lower corners so I could add wheels to this thing. So I want to be able to move it around at some certain times. Now all these wheels lock, so it'll be a nice sturdy base when they're all wheels are all locked. Then I added some plywood on the uh, the top, and just again I'm piecing everything together on this build to make it work. Now a while back, about a year ago, I had a subscriber uh, send me a bunch of bamboo, and that's what I'm using in this. So on the sides I'm using it's a little less than a quarter inch. It's about three sixteenths of an inch bamboo. And I'm using a caulking on it that's going to stay flexible so I don't have to worry about the you know wood moving and tearing everything apart, basically. So I just put the caulking on and kind of brushed it out so it was nice and smooth. And then I used my 23-gauge uh, brad nailer to pin it in place. And then all the stuff that was overhanging, I just cut up with a handsaw and then cleaned it up with a um, sander. And then came back with some glue anytime when there's like a little tiny gap because those things were so out of square i just used a little wood glue and then filled it and then sanded it out and that worked really good it works pretty good on bamboo you really don't notice it so after the sides were done the top was pretty much the same except for i just used regular wood glue because it is plywood i don't have to worry too much about the movement there is a little bit of a concern but not huge time will tell and once I had the top complete, I would just come back again with the handsaw and then trim everything out and then came back with a router. And after all the, everything was hand trimmed, I came back with a router and edged everything and just put a chamfer around the whole piece. And then once the chamfer was um, all cut in, I came back and hand sanded it or um, used a power sander, power hand sander. And uh, this worked pretty good. And I got a really nice finish on it. I was impressed at how well everything came out. So I'm, I'm using, um, uh, oh, what the hell's the stuff called? Um, Danish oil on this. Because I didn't want to, you know, first of all, it dries pretty quick. You put it on 15 minutes later, half an hour later, come back and wipe it off. And then it's dry within usually, you know, another hour or so in a, in a climate controlled shop. So I decided I was going to try something different on this. I actually went down to the Home Depot and I got some fence posts. These are literally um, the end caps for me uh, metal fence or, you know, what I'm, the metal chinking, metal chink things, fences. So for the top section, um, I used those little end caps and I just screwed them into the board and then on down through the top. And that made them actually pretty secure. And then I bought this 10 foot piece of one and three eighths metal fencing. It was like $10 for the whole piece. So uh, I think I had like 20 bucks into these legs all together. And then just uh, put the fence posts in the bottom and that's going to be the base of this cart or stand. And the top was pretty much the same as the bottom. Um, I built that all out of plywood because I wanted to, to put a drawer in there and then just, you know, did everything pretty much the same as I did on the bottom. Those little hand saws sure do come in handy when it comes to flush trimming. So, like I said, top was just like the bottom, except for I left the opening for a drawer and came back with um, some poplar. I had a bunch of poplar that just, you know, three foot, four foot pieces left over from a project that I didn't, um, an off YouTube project. So I was going to use that for the drawer because I want to make it a little bit nicer of a drawer. And um, I'm using my, my homemade uh, pocket hole machine to use to put pocket holes in the front and back of the drawer 
And that's how I'm going to secure this thing. I'm not going to go through any hassle. And then again, I use my homemade corner clamps to kind of hold everything in place while I screwed it together. And, you know, those work really well. So it was a pretty quick process. Now, I didn't get fancy with this. I'm just putting a half inch piece of plywood on the bottom of the drawer. Uh, I'm using half inch, first of all, because it's a really large drawer and I don't want the bottom sagging out on it. So uh, that worked really well. I just came back and added some screws later. And then the... Um, drawer I wanted to put some compartments in for the filaments and other things that I just used with the 3D printer. You know, I want to have a place to store some of my extra filaments, a place to store some of the tools I use. And uh, of course I'm using Kaizen Foam. That's like my favorite shop organization tool ever. Uh, they have it in white and black. So I'm using white here. And uh, I just kind of framed in a scrap piece that I had. I cut it to length and then just whatever was left out there, I, I framed it in. And in the back, I'll use to, I can just put whatever back there, um, some silica, you know, the silicone packs or whatever to help keep things dry. And then extra tools. So after I had the piece cut out, I went over and laid out all the tools that I use on a regular basis with the 3D printer and stuck them in the Kaizen foam. And then came back and made sure everything fit and it all looked good. Now here's a trick I use when I'm adding drawer slides. Uh, I always use that double stick tape because then I can just put the drawer slide where I want it and it stays there while I'm trying to add screws. I don't have to mess around with trying to hold everything in place while I'm adding screws to the drawer slides. And in this case, I just mounted the uh, drawer slides right to the bottom of the drawer. And I'm gonna do the same with the, uh, the other side is gonna go right to the bottom of the frame and that'll lift it up, oh, three eighths of an inch or so, which is plenty in this case. So once I have the uh, drawer frames in, I also do that on the, the slides that go into the cabinet as well. I put the double stick tape on them. And that just holds them right in place while I'm adding screws. It's kind of a nice little trick. Now, I was a little bit tight on the drawer, but that's fine. It, you know, again, it isn't, it's not a customer build. It's for me, and I don't, I don't mind if it's a little tight. So afterwards, I made a, just a face panel that I could uh, put out on the drawer, and I just tacked it in place with some 23-gauge uh, brad nails. And then this is a, I don't know what you call this, it's kind of like some kind of housing that I'm going to stick over the top of the printer, and you'll see here in a second why, uh, but I wanted to kind of, you know, do something special with it, so I 3D printed the, um, the name Dremel out and then added it to this little, uh, this is going to hold all my filaments above the printer, or the ones that I use regularly above the printer. So I just I used some 2P10 and then um, tacked them in place with a 23-grade uh, rad nailer while the, uh, while the CA was hardening. I didn't use any activator because when you use activator on this PLA plastic, it, what, it turns white. So after that was done, I just mounted it to and then um, unwrapped a lot of my PLAs. Now they say you can only use you know, their proprietary PLAs with this, but if you don't mount them in there, in the machine and you carry them over that, you can do a lot of different things. Now I've printed carbon fiber, nylon, and wood um, infused PLAs with this printer so far and it's worked great. And I also have a whole slew of just standard PLA, 1.75 PLAs that I've been printing. So the only thing left to do at this point is to uh, make some handles and I 3D printed the handles for this and then uh, put a little double stick tape on the back of them so I could just stick them where they needed to go and then I didn't have to you know, try to hold them in place while I ran a screw in them. And of course, like most of my cabinets, I always leave one handle crooked to remind me that not everything has to be perfect. Well, there you have it. There is my Dremel cart 3D printer stand, whatever you want to call it. I'm pretty happy about having all my PLAs up here so I don't have to, you know, change out every time I want to switch to a different color, which will be really handy because I do have been doing a lot of 3D printing. In fact, I, uh, I've used this 3D printer now oh, for the last two or three weeks and I actually use it to model a new invention of mine. It's a tool that's coming out on the market shortly. I just finished the provisional patent and uh, you'll hear more about that here in the next few coming weeks here on the channel. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll talk to you later.